I used to play like 60 card zombie world back when we had how Halky Fibrex is like a live way to play like Zombie World with a combo variant. And when Halky Fibrex was dead, we all rejoiced and we're like, hey, Zombie World's dead. Flues can play untethered now. But psych, because we have a new engine that's not even new anymore. So basically, the Brendan pack is just another way for us to be able to play Zombie World in a combo f capacity and be able to justify playing that grass looks greener and making it a 60 card variant. So I know I, like, I made a video before on like playing Eldritch with, with Brendan before. That was more of like a floodgate variant of Eldritch, which felt really powerful, but a lot of times I just, like, really preferred playing just Eldritch without even the Brennan package and just playing more Toxic Trap cards. So here I feel like the Brennan package feels more at home because you're already leaning more into the combo capacity of the deck and not so much on, like, Toxic Trap cards. So I feel like it really works out really well with the graveyard setup that Brennan has, as well as just, like, how oppressive of a uh, strategy that part of the deck can be. So I actually kind of think that this is even better than what 60 card grass zombies used to be like when we were reliant on Halky Fibrax because we were just playing odd cards like Reasoning and we had to go and summon Union Zombie and another monster going to Halky Fibrax and then summon the Glow Bloom and then link it off after getting the bitch in the graveyard to activate the zombie world, summoning the Baller Drock and when they activated Maxi, they were suddenly drawing 10 cards off of all that. Whereas like here, you could full combo and give your opponent at most two, maybe three cards. So it's really feels like a much more balanced deck while having some pretty crazy high rolls. So of course, grass looks greener to mill a billion cards. I don't play left arm offering because that really goes against what Eldritch is trying to do. So like the Eldritch uh, portion of this deck is very just useful just for because I know that most people forget, but Eldritch is actually zombie support. <laughs> so, like, the whole idea is with Left Arm Offering is when you activate and resolve it, you're not only banishing cards from your hand, which is awkward, you're also not able to set cards to turn, or set spells and traps to turn you activate it. So, even if you mill all your Luxors of Scarlet Sanguine and you're like, man, I'm excited, I could finally set my limited to one Conquistador from the deck. Well, you can't, because Left Arm Offering says you can. So, that's why I just play Grass, and the rest of the deck is just built to function well in itself without even needing grass to resolve so again like the synergy between the breaded package and the zombie world package is if you have uh breaded fusion you could use it to summon labellion and you could send baller drop to the graveyard or you could send necro world banshee to the graveyard so that you could access zombie world and uh, you could even send the glow bloom to the graveyard if you already have access to zombie world in some capacity so you could summon doom king baller drop directly from the deck it's pretty insane and Foolish Burial is just amazing in all fronts for this deck, so you could send an Eldritch that you need, you could send the tragedy you need so you could get access to your Aluber, so you could get access to your Bread and Fusion, so you could get access to your Zombie World, while also having a teensy weensy better of a boss monster as well, which sets you up with more plays thanks to Albino being an Albino. So, you have Cursed Eldland, which is insane in itself, allowing you to just get stonks upon stonks. You have Pot of Prosperity, because it's limited to one, which means it's good. You have Super Polymerization, because when you Zombie World, suddenly this is your new boss monster and everyone's is just mad when they get both of their monsters cleared so you could summon a very underwhelming dragon monster that's apparently a zombie so if you're locked into zombies then you can't actually summon it because it's not a zombie so keep that in mind uh a lot of times I'm trying to turbo out Eldritch as soon as possible if I could set it up along with another Scarlet Sanguine because then we could use Scarlet Sanguine to summon a Baller Drop from the deck, which is amazing if you have Zombie World access, or Necro World Banshee so that you could then guarantee your full Zombie World setup, which is Baller Drop and Zombie World. And I play the standard Eldritch Spells and Traps. I don't play Black Awakening just because it's a little underwhelming and I'd rather not have extra underwhelming cards if I can help it. And I like the ratio of spells and traps for Eldritch that I have in the deck. It usually works out pretty well. I do like Gold Land Forever because Lightning Storm or Feather Duster hurts so much. Just having like an Omni Negate on top of everything since we can't do Hulk into Formula Synchron into <laughs> Baron de Fleur for an Omni Negate though anymore. It feels really nice to have another in, in our type searchable Omni Negate that we could use to be able to at least feel a little more secure when we have our full setup but feel a little fragile towards like a back row clear and we'd make enough room so that we could play Brendan Red and Ad Libitum so we could do the standard Despia stuff of being able to go ahead and use Mirror Jade to set up Brendan Red and then pop through with Chimera. Except the funniest part, if you happen to have like the Zombie World, Baller Drock, and Mirror Jade set up, which is not as crazy as it sounds, then you could do funny interactions. So let's say if you have a hand of Bread and Fusion and Zombie World, or Bread and Fusion and Necroworld Banshee, or... 
a looper and a Corrode Banshee. Like, either of those two-card combo basically sets you up that board, where you use Bread Fusion to send the Glow of Bloom, so you could then go ahead and summon the Lebelion, discard the Banshee, for example, so you could then summon Mirror Jade, and then you chain link two the Lebelion effect, uh, chain link one the Glow Bloom effect that you send with the Bread Infusion, so that you could then first summon the Mirror Jade off of the Lebelion while chain blocking an Ash, which they would have used already on your Bread Infusion anyway, but beside the point. <laughs> and then you go and chain link two, special summon Ball Rock from the deck using Glow Bloom, and then you can activate the effect of Mirror Jade to try to banish a monster on the field, sending Albino as your cost, and then you chain the Ball Rock's effect as long as Zombie World's on the field, so that you can negate the now zombie mirror jade, so you can negate its effect. You'll still be able to use the effect of Albinal to set a Brendan Red. Meanwhile, you're also going to be able to uh, say, hey, uh, by the way, mirror jade's effect is still live and vi viable because it, since its effect was negated, you could activate it again the next turn, which is funny. So, and if you happen to have another, like, like a tragedy in the graveyard, for example, or another uh, a Luber in the graveyard, or some way of keeping Brennan and Red alive, then that's cool. If not, then maybe, I don't know, set search for a Brennan and Fusion Fruit Pop instead. The point is, it's it's a play that you could do. And then, um, that's the standard stuff. I like Gazuki and Mizuki. Gazuki, just another way to have a miller. Um, we have a lot of ways to mill thanks to the Brennan package. So, Gazuki lets us mill. Uni Zombie lets us mill. A Luber accessing Bread Infusion lets us mill. Foolish Burial lets us mill. It, it's pretty nice. Um, I don't play too many more normal summons. I just like to keep it at the Luber, the Uni Zombies, and the Gazukis. It is nice that if you have like. Uh, Uni Zombie and either Gazuki or Metsuki, that's going to allow you to access both Zombie World as well as two monsters on the field, so you could then go into Verte Anaconda, and then you could either choose to do the regular Anaconda play by going into Burn Fusion and summoning uh, the Mirror Jade using the Anaconda, or you could do something dank, which is uh, after sending Necro World Batch into the graveyard, you could then just be like, hey, I'm summoning Lebelion instead. What's that? I can't special summon Mirror Jade after? Doesn't matter, because you used the Red Infusion to send Baller Drock to the graveyard anyway, and now you have access to Baller Drock coming back alongside your Necro World Banshee. And sometimes that could be hot if you also have access to Brennan and Red as well, because it's funny. And then you could use the Brennan and Red to summon the Mirror Jade afterwards. It's dank, and uh, something to consider, so <laughs> it's funny. Um, Gold Bloom is just cool, and I like it. I don't play Link Karibo anymore for it, because you're usually not turboing it out. Usually it's more of a card that you send from the deck to the graveyard. You're not, and if you are linking it off, you're likely going to be able to link it off into Vampire Sucker anyway. So that's pretty much the main gist of it. Uh, Mizuki is cracked, so being able to use it alongside uh, to bring back like Millers, like Kazuki is funny, but also being able to use it to bring back Baller Druck is funny, or Eldritch is funny. Most importantly, if you have Zombie World and you resolved Grass, and you have your Luber in the graveyard, and your Mizuki in the graveyard, you can activate Mizuki to special summon your now Zombie Luber to then activate its effect to search for a Bread Infusion. Now you're actually insane at this game, so that's funny. I I don't play more than one just because, again, uh, the Mizuki, if you're not set up, is kind of annoying to draw into. So, like, and I want to keep them. It's not a normal summon, but I want to keep the amount of awkward, like, cards in hand to a minimum. So, like, we already have a lot of awkward heads that, in the wrong circumstances, can make things uh, potentially bricky. So, I think just, like, having one Mizuki as, like, an option to mill off of Gazuki or Mini Zombie is enough, but not something that I rely on too much. Like, I'm not expecting to mill it off of a grass resolution, but if I do, then ha! Um, and then... Standard just hand traps because I'm tr trying to play the game. So I like the multiple negates with effect Veiler and Imperm being useful with like, you know, LOL normal summon a Luber, for example. And then having the standard Ash Blossom and LOL, 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 they have Flundery, so Maxi is pointless. But that's okay because you're playing Zombie World, which is supposed to FTK Flunderies, and they'll never draw their Feather Duster or their Lightning Storm. So you're a winner. And I like the two Albaz, the three Aluber. We now play the two Brennan opening because I guess that's a bandless or something. I've been considering cutting down the Brennan red to one, maybe even adding like another source of just like disruption, like another effect veil or another hand trap, or even like something like a feather duster is viable here. 60 cards, so you'll never draw it, but one can cope. And I think that's pretty much it. Pot of Prosperity, it's kind of awkward, which is why it's good that it's only limited to one, because like resolving it could be really awkward, banishing six, and you'll usually want to banish six but usually i if i don't feel like super poly is going to be relevant i'll get rid of draco necro the draco stapelia 
and maybe my Link Monsters. The extra deck, I feel like I'm happy with the fusions here. You could play just one Lebelion, but it's situations where your first Lebelion gets impermed or effect failed. It's nice to have the second one as a backup. Uh, you don't need Masquerade, but I like to have it in situations where I could just summon it. It's very niche. I took out the um, Starving Venom Dragon, but it's something you could put back in as another Super Poly target, as well as Mud Dragon. You can play those instead of Axe Kotalker and Nightmare Unicorn. I like didn't go into them. 99% of the time, because usually when you're swarming the board, this deck can very well, uh, very easily swarm the board, but usually you're locked into fusions when you do so. But for like certain follow up plays, you could do like some pretty insane extensions, especially as a grass, after a grass resolution. So it's nice to have the additional disruption, but it usually isn't necessarily. So you could replace this with like Mud Dragon, Starving Venom. You could add your rank 10 package, pretend like you're a regular Eldritch player. You could add, I don't know, IP Masquerade. I wouldn't do that. You could add Appaloosa. I wouldn't do that. You could add Lila or Lena, the Light Charmer. You could even add the Dark Charmer too, but I would recommend the Light one more. Um, but I guess the Dark one is a little more. Uh, viable in terms of like being able to disrupt opponents with it, but I think the light one's a little easier to go to. I don't know. You could add Titan Clad, and you could even add uh, what is it? Uh, it's so you could then send Titan Clad to the graveyard, search a, I guess, the Ecclesia that you replaced with one of your bread and red, so you could then uh, search the Dogmatical Punishment that you replaced with, I don't know, your. The fact failure, <laughs> and now you have some more disruption, but that might be a little too much cope. So, I like Gyron and Chimera. One thing to keep in mind if you do have Brennan Red setups, if you also have Scarlet Sanguine, Scarlet Sanguine blocks you into zombies, so you want to make sure that you're resolving Brennan Red before Elixir Scarlet Sanguine, otherwise, you'll have no valid targets to summon off of the Brennan Red. So, sometimes you'd be able to achieve both. Uh, just be careful on your chain link orders and it is sometimes frustrating to uh, if you're trying to set up a guardian chimera pop having to banish your eldritch or baller drop could be a little, pretty awkward but it, it it's just more interaction that you have that is very important so that you're not just reliant on zombie world not being dead uh, to whatever your opponent has to make it dead so uh, that's pretty much that vampire sucker I'd say is very essential so you could like go link off your eldritch spells and traps along with like eldritch so you could get eldritch in a graveyard get these to have their graveyard effects and also be able to put some in your opponent's monster so you could draw a card and turn off their numerons link spider is nice just to link off the Akira uh, again you could have I'm Duck as well if you if you prefer. There's a lot of options. There's a lot of flexibility in like these two slots specifically. Uh, I would keep everything else except like these last two slots and then just expand on it as you want. So just resolve grass and GG easy.